are back to the Race and Ethnic Relations on Campus podcast show. That's right, Race and Ethnic Relations on Campus uh, podcast show. I am Dr. B. I am Dr. B. Welcome back to our show. This is show number 67. That's right, show number 67. And it's entitled, The Rapidly Changing Racial and Ethnic Diversity of Our Student Population." Wow. That's right, show number 67, entitled, The Rapidly Changing Racial and Ethnic Diversity of Our Student Population. Wow, it's the beginning of another academic year. The fall semester has begun, everyone. (laughs) I know you are enjoying the fall semester. It's just started uh, a week. We're in week number two of the fall semester. And it, it's s- students are everywhere. And it's and the energy is back. Because after COVID and everything, students are back on campus. It's refreshing. Let me just say, it's so refreshing just to have students on campus. In the lecture halls, in the dorms, in the uh, uh, all across campus, and as you know, uh, I, I've been teaching for uh, several decades at different universities, and over the past couple of years, it has been a, a challenge to maintain the academic rigor and the academic atmosphere of. Uh, as though you're in college and university when you don't have the students. So now, <laughs> so now, yes, students are back and it's refreshing. It's a, it's a beautiful day uh, in that respect. It is, you again, like I said, you can feel the energy. You can see the excitement. You can hear the collegiality. Yet you also also see the rapidly increased racial and ethnic diversity of our student population. And I'm sure it's just not here. It's all across. I'm I'm sure it's all across the United States. The rapidly changing dynamics increase Racial and ethnic diversity of our student population. Wow. And, and, you know, it, it just leaves you speechless sometimes. And again, it's, it really sh- and it really shouldn't. Because, again, this is what uh, this is has been developing over decades. This trend of increased racial and ethnic diversity of our entire United States at each and every age segment the increased diversity and let me just do a quick shout out Oh, I'm just going to stop right there I'm just already into it folks I'm already into it three minutes in four minutes Uh, first let me thank our our podcast platforms thank our podcast thank you Podbean I want to give a shout out to Podbean Apple Podcasts Apple Podcasts Podcast, Google Play, Google Play. I want to get a thank Spotify, Spotify. Thank Audible, Audible. <laughs> uh, thank uh, all the music. Uh, oh, Samsung, Samsung Podcast, Samsung Podcast. Oh, uh, and uh, again, all our platforms uh, uh, for our podcast. And, and it's ever increasing. Podcast Addict. Let me uh, give a shout out to Podcast Attic, uh, uh, Pod News, uh, like I said, Audible, all across, Tune In, and uh, oh, I Heart Radio, I Heart Radio. <laughs> and uh, again, I just want to make sure that uh, all the platforms, and, and particularly, of course, Apple Podcasts, uh, thank you so much for showcasing our podcast and all the listeners out there. We're doing. We're trying to do our thing, and we truly appreciate you uh, sending out to your audiences. And we want to reach more and more audiences. Uh, and this relates to 
uh, uh, the our audiences are becoming more diverse, uh, racially and ethnically. And I, uh, and of course, it, it's it's so refreshing when you're reaching newer audiences, and uh, it's also refreshing to see, or like I said, on campus, the racial and ethnic diversity of our student population, and it reflects. Let me get down to the uh, essence of this show. It reflects the increased diversity of our United States. And it's directly, directly related to the 2020 census. That's right. The 2020 census, which came out uh, year last year, 2021, after the analysis uh, from 2010 to 2020 and all the data collecting and all the analysis it started to come out in August of last year 2021 and I've been reviewing <laughs> been reviewing uh, these uh, the announcements and it's so refreshing to uh, recognize that the outcome of those uh, of the of the data is directly, Showing itself in our college student population. Our college student population has increased dramatically in its racial and ethnic diversity. <laughs> and it's directly reflect reflected in the 2020 census. And I'm going to hit you with something also that I kind of anticipated this some almost 10 years ago. Uh, uh, oh yeah, 10 years ago. Love, I have to do this right right now. I, I talked about uh, last podcast about uh, is refreshing for my previous book, my previous book, Race and Ethnic Relations on Campus uh, 2018, and where, where it was a four-year anniversary. Well, now I'm going to highlight my other book, The New Face of America. The New Face of America, semicolon, how the emerging multiracial, multi-ethnic majority is changing the United States. And I published this in 2013 with ABC Clio. In 2013. <laughs> and that's when I felt, that's when I felt, nine and a half years ago, really ten years, eleven years ago, but nine and a half years ago technically that the multiracial population need to be recognized and is growing tremendously and I recognize this not a trend but the way our country is integrating getting along groups more than likely deciding not staying in their uh, so-called identified racial and ethnic category, but getting along with people, other groups that don't that looks different, yet similar values, similar traditions, similar lifestyles, and that's where you see uh, when I publish this book, the multiracial, multi-ethnic communities were drastically, drastically, significantly increasing fivefold at the time. And now in 2022, yet illustrated in the 2020 census, the data shows it. The data is there. And so, I again, I just want to give a shout out to how I perceived how our country was growing and developing and integrating and adjusting and adapting and accepting individuals in uh, ethnic histories, ethnic traditions, and breaking down those barriers and getting along with each other and having the next generation offspring to reflect that. And now you see it in our student population. So let me get to this 2020, uh, highlight some of the 2020 census uh, data and also highlight a couple of reports, some analysis by experts of 
what's happening to what happened to the 2020 census is increased uh, so much in its racial and ethnic diversity. <laughs> okay, wow. Uh, again, here it is, uh, and I just printed this out a few days ago. It says the 2020 census illuminates racial and ethnic composition of the country. And uh, here's a quick, I'm um, doing some bullet points. Uh, they say, today is the release of the 2020 census. Redi uh, redi redistricting data provides a new s snapshot of the racial and ethnic composition of the country as a result of improvements in the design of racial and ethnic ethnicity questions, processing, and coding. Uh, here we go. Nearly all groups saw population gains this past decade. And the increase in the two or more races population referred to referred to throughout this story as multiracial population was especially large, an increase of two hundred and seventy six percent. An increase of two hundred and seventy six percent. Wow. The white alone population declined by 8.6% since 2010. Hmm. The 2020 census shows, again, uh, here's some bullet points. Uh, the white population remained the largest race or ethnic ethnicity group in the United States with 204.3 million people identifying as white alone. Overall, 235.3 4 million people reported white alone or in combination with another group. However, the white alone population decreased by 8.6% since 2020. 2010. Excuse me. The multiracial population has changed considerably since 2010. It was measured at 9 million people in 2010 and is now 33.8 million people in 2020. That's an increase of 276%. Now I'm going to go into this report highlighting the specific racial and ethnic populations, starting with the Hispanic or Latino population. The Hispanic Latino population grew from 50.5 50 .5 million. That's 16.3% of the U.S. population in 2010 to 62.1 million in 2020. That's an 18.7 increase for the Hispanic Latino population from 2010 to 2020. Slightly more than half, 51.5%. 1% of the total U.S. population growth between 2010 and 20 came from the growth in the Hispanic or Latino population. So we see approximately an 18.7% increase among the uh, Hispanic Latino population. Next, uh, the report uh, highlights the white population. Overall, 20, uh, 235 million 0.4 million people reported white alone or in combination with another group. The white alone population accounted for 204.3 million people and 61.6% of all people living in the United States compared to 223.6 million and 72.4% in 2010. Although the white alone population decreased by 8.6% since 2010, the white in combination, population saw a 316% increase during the same period. So the white in combination population increased 316%. That is, in combination with other racial and ethnic populations. Hmm. Hmm. Together, and still in the white population, together with the 31.1 million people who identified as white in combination with another race, such as black or African American or Asian, the white alone population in combination comprised of 235.4 million people 
and 71% of the total population. Hmm. Yet the white alone population decreased by 8.6%. The black or African American population. The black or African American population. They say the black or African American population in combination population grew by 88.7% since 2010. In 2020, the black or African American alone population, 41.1 million, accounted for 12.4% of all people living in the United States, compared with 38.9%, 38.9 million, and 12.6% in 2010. Coupled with the uh, coupled with the 5.8 million resident r respondents who identified as black or African American, in combination with another racial group such as white or American Indian or Alaska Native, the black or African American alone or in combination population total 46.9 million people. That's 14.2 percent of the total population in 2020. So we're talking about 14.2 percent. Uh, 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 among the black or African American in combination with uh, uh, combination of population, uh, so it's fourteen point two percent. While the black or African American loan population grew five point six percent since twenty ten, the black African American population in combination population grew eighty eight point seven percent. Grew eighty eight point seven percent. Wow. American Indian or Alaska Native population. From 2010 to 2020, the American Indian, Alaskan, and Alaskan Native in combination population increased by 160%. 160%. In 2020, the American Indian and Alaskan Native alone population, 3.7 million, accounted for 1.1% of all people living in the United States compared with 0.9%, 2.9 million in 2010. An additional 5.9 million people identified as American Indian and Alaska Native and another race group in 2020, such as white or black or African American. Together, the American Indian and Alaska Native alone or in combination population comprise 9.7 million people. That's 2.9% of the total population in 2010, up from 5.2 million, 1.7% in 2010. So an increase up to 2.9% of the total population. The American Indian Alaska Native alone population grew by 27.1%, and the American Indian Alaska Native in combination population grew by, again, like I said, 160%. Wow. Asian population, approximately 9.9 .9 million people, 6% of all respondents, identified as Asian alone in 2020, up from 14.7%. 14.7 million people, that's 4.8% increase. Coupled with the 4.1 uh, um, uh, million respondents uh, who identified as Asian in combination with another racial group such as white or native Hawaiian and other Pacific Islander, the Asian alone or in combination population comprised 24, 24 million, that's 7.2% of the population. 7.2%. The Asian alone population grew by 35.5% between 2010 to 2020. In comparison, the Asian and combination population grew by 55.5%. Wow. Native Hawaiian or other Pacific Islander population. Over half of Native Hawaiians and other Pacific Islanders identify with more than one race. In 2020 census, 689,966 people, that's 0.2% identified as Native Hawaiian or other Pacific Islander alone, up from 540,013 uh, people, that's 0.2% in 2010. Coupled with the 896,497 uh, people, who identify as Native Hawaiian or other Pacific Islander in combination with another racial group, the Native Hawaiian and other Pacific Islander alone or in combination population total 1.6 million people and 0.5% of the total population.
The native Hawaiian and other Pacific Islander alone population grew by 27.8% between 2010 and 2020. In comparison, the native Hawaiian and other Pacific Islander in combination population grew faster 30.8% since 2010. Two more categories. I need to read this. Some other racial uh, race population. Some other race population was the second largest alone in combination with racial group comprised 15.1% of the total population. Uh, quickly, uh, uh, about 27.9 million people, that's 8.4% of respondents, identify as some other race alone in, in 2020. This is up from 19.1%, roughly 6.2%. Now, getting to uh, as well as uh, the report, multiracial population. In 2020, the percentage of people who reported multiple races changed more than all of the race alone groups, increasing 2.9% of the population, 9 million people in 2010 to 10.2% of the population, 33.8 million people in 22. Wow. The largest multiracial combination in 2020 were white and some other racial race population 9.3, 19.3 million white and American Indian, 4 million white and, uh, and black or African American, 3.1 million, 1 million white and Asian, 2.7 million black or African American and some other race group, 1 million. I, uh, and then looking at the white and black or African American increased by 1.2 million people. That's a 67.4 increase. And then and, uh, of all the combination, the multiracial increased by more than uh, a 230% change uh, between uh, African American and some other race from 2010 to 2020. And then uh, the final thing. Between 2010 and 2020, the white and some other race population added 17.1, 17.6 million people to the multiracial population, a change of over 1,000%. So the multiracial population and the increased diversity has changed considerably since 2010, where basically they see a 276% increase among the multiracial population. And you can see this diversity in our student population right now in 2022. In my classes, I see so much racial and ethnic diversity. It's so refreshing. <laughs> Let me, it's so refreshing. This has been a long time coming. And there are some folks that are completely shocked and surprised. Yeah, I said some folks who are completely shocked and surprised. Yeah, demographers have been talking about this for over 20, 30, 40 years. Well, guess what? It's 2022, and it's happening right now. And you can see it among the 18 to 22-year age group. It's massively blowing up to another level. And I'm using, uh, I want to highlight this uh, CNN report as well, CNN Politics. It says, the, uh, the title is, Census Release Shows America is More Diverse and More Multiracial Than Ever. Than ever. Uh, this was uh, published uh, August tw uh, 12, 2021. And uh, these uh, reporters uh, uh, state that here it is our analysis quote, our, uh, here it was the United States is more diverse and more racial, multiracial than ever before, according to the news. Our analysis quote of the 2020 census results show that the U.S. population is much more multiracial and more racially and ethnically diverse than what we measured in the past, said Nicholas Jones, the director and senior advisor of the Race and Ethnic Research and Outreach in the U.S. Census Bureau Population Division. 
Furthermore, it says people of color represented 43% of the total U.S. population in 2020, up from 34% in 2010. So people of color in the United States represent 43% of the U.S. population. And that was in 2020. It was 34% in 2010. That's amazing. And then this report further states the non-Hispanic white share of the U.S. population fell to 57% in 2020, shrinking by 6% points since 2010. The largest decrease, the largest decrease of any race or ethnicity. The share of those who identified as Hispanic or Latino or as multiracial grew the most. So I'm giving you this data and want to project beyond the numbers. It's, of course, it's different where individuals Uh, are identifying in the census their diversity. Now, in the past, decades ago, when populations were diverse, it wasn't, I'm not going to say, it wasn't cool, it it wasn't uh, as permitted in the past, decades ago, to identify yourself with several different races. You are this race or that race. Um, for me, it's black or African American. Wasn't about multiracial, or if you're Hispanic, you're just Hispanic Latino, or Asian Asian, white white, American Indian, Alaskan Native, Native American. That's it. But now, now we see age groups. Young, middle age, older age groups identify more of their racial and ethnic diversity and their multiracial diversity more than ever. More than ever. And you can see it from the 2010 census to the 2020. And of course you can see it from the 2000 to 2020. But again, there's new measurements from the 2010 to the 2020. It's more accepted now in 2020 now, and even more so in 2022. And you can see it. Let me just, oh, I'm going to break this all the way. I can see it. I can see it. In my student population. In my classes. Today. The extreme diversity. The explosion of diversity. And here's where. When students. And I'm, I give. Um, let me just say. I really break this. I, I, I give students. right, Actually right now. An opportunity to look around. The classroom. <laughs> Look who your colleague is in this classroom. <laughs> and they are quite surprised themselves. <laughs> they can see the diversity. And I even give them an exercise that post a picture of a friend who doesn't look like you. And many times those students will post a picture of a person who is a person of color. (laughs) And that is refreshing. Hello. That is refreshing to see in 2022 with all the initiatives that I have been involved with since being in academia as a professor 
from one university to another, from the Southwest to the uh, the and also the Midwest to the West Coast. When I was on the West Coast, and now that I'm in the Southeast of the United States, the initiatives for diversity. Uh oh, yes, I'm going. To, the initiatives across the country and with from state to state. Is finally having a positive impact on the college student population today. No longer, oh, 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 number, no longer am I lecturing to just African American kids and white Caucasian kids. Not that I don't mind, I loved it. But when you're lecturing for over, oh my gosh, for over 30, 40 years, you like to see some diversity. And now I can say, oh my gosh, this is a cultural uh, explosion. This is a turn. This this could be a turning point. And I'd like to know, do you think it's a oh, it, do you think it is a turning point in our society, in our the United States? Do you think it's a turning point where we see more racial and ethnic diversity among our college students than ever before at your particular college or university, whether how small of a college, medium size, or large? Give me your impression. Give me your feedback. I would like to know what is the racial and ethnic diversity on your particular campus. Send your response to me, Dr. B, at EJB678 at gmail.com. That's right, at EJB678 at gmail.com. And I would like to know. Seriously. Because I don't think I'm living in a bubble here in the southeast portion of the United States. I don't think I'm living in a bubble. I just feel it across the country. And I sense it across the country. And I'm reading it. In the latest census data reports. <coughs> and I'm also getting a lemon. <coughs> Excuse me. Almost losing my voice. I'm also getting a little pushback on this. From certain outlets. Saying that. They start to recognize this diversity. But then they're saying. Well it doesn't make that much of a difference. We knew it was coming. But eventually everyone will be a. Uh, a majority in some respect. So what? What? Yeah, there is there is a, a, a bit of a pushback on the increase of diversity in our United States. Wow. There is there is a little there, not a little bit some pushback, and yet the data shows it. The 2020 data shows it. Clearly. And now I'm seeing it on campus. And I would like to know, simple as it, I would like to know, do you see it on your campus? The increased racial and ethnic diversity of your student population, whether it's in the United States or in other countries. I know many of you are listening to my podcast in other countries across the world. Please email me at ejb678 at gmail.com and give me your your impression. Is the diversity, racial and ethnic diversity changing on your campus? Because at least I would say the initiatives that have been implemented politically over decades... <laughs> The these initiatives to increase diversity on these on as as many campuses as possible finally having an impact. 
And it's just not the initiative. It's it's about uh, people are getting along. <laughs> Much more so. And it's not a big deal of being, being one race and that's it. it. That's all I'm going to social, who I'm going to socialize with. But every racial and ethnic population is in combination. It's intermingling. It's having, <laughs> it's bringing in the next generation of multiracial, biracial kids. Coming to college. Now growing up to be <laughs> college kids. So again, it is, now I'm getting more behind, you get them going, digging deeper. A deeper dive beyond the census data. The 2020 census data. You're getting much more people of color in the United States being and also being active at the uh, going to college, getting their education, their higher education, their degrees. That's refreshing, refreshing. And it's also uh, emerging. We have an emerging of new scholars, new individuals who are getting their college degrees, advanced degrees, who are persons of color. This is where these initiatives are supposed to be paying off. And we got to keep this momentum. That's what I'm saying. Keep this momentum going. It helps out everybody. And I do mean it helps out everybody. Because my, my students say, wow, I want to learn. That's what I'm getting from my students. They want to learn. From people who look different than them. That's the reason my, why my, <laughs> let me just say this, my race and ethnic relations class in my department is just blowing up. It's, it's increasing uh, double the amount now. This fall semester. And that's refreshing. So again, I, I just wanted to reflect on this. That Are you seeing this pattern, this trend as well at, on your campus? I think it's directly reflected in our census data. And I'm just enjoying it. I'm going for the ride. And it helps each and every one of us of how our society, our U.S., yeah, our up and down, very challenging U.S. society in all its ways, each and every year, each and every summer, and now we're beginning the fall, and uh, it's directly re reflected in how we're getting back to some type of normalcy from COVID, and people just want to learn from other folks. They are, uh, and I'm just saying college students are waiting for this opportunity. We can't hold hold them back anymore. With outdated initiatives, we have to constantly learn from this next generation of college students who want to immerse themselves into different cultures so they can be better prepared for the real world. Cuz the real world just based upon the census data is rapidly changing. So let's be in support of it. Uh, let's just embrace it. Let's learn from it. I'm learning. <laughs> I've been in this business for, like I said, for 40 some years. <laughs> I'm learning every semester. <laughs> and uh, that's the excitement of the uh, new semester, new academic year. So there you go. I went a little bit long. This show is entitled... Show 67, the rapidly changing racial and ethnic diversity of our student population. Wow! Loving it! <laughs> there you go. <laughs> and again, if you have any comments or questions, please email me at ejb678 at gmail.com. ejb678 at gmail. I really want to know what your student population looks like on your campus. Or those of you who are going to school, tell me what it's like. 
Those who are teaching, tell me what it's like. Those who are family members who have just taken their kids to college, tell me what it's like. At EJB678 at gmail.com. Show 67, the rapidly changing racial and ethnic diversity of our student population. I want to thank Podbean, Podbean. I want to thank uh, <laughs> Google Play, Google Play. I want to thank uh, Apple Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, iHeartRadio, iHeartRadio, Spotify, Spotify, Samsung Podcast, Samsung Podcast, Amazon, Amazon, uh, Music, Music, uh, Audible, Audible, uh, and uh, um, Pod, uh, <laughs> Pod, Pod Chaser. <laughs> And all the platforms. And I want to thank my publisher, ABC Clio, Prager Publisher, for publishing my book, The New Face of America, How the Emerging Multiracial, Multi-Ethnic Majority is Changing the United States in 2013. Please check out that book. I, I, I mean, that book. Oh, oh my gosh. That book, and I have it right here. I basically... Talked about, oh, I do have to do this. Uh, uh, talked about how the emerging uh, multiracial, multi ethnic population is changing. The multiracial population, I go into the census data at that point in time and um, go into the background issues, the cultural history of multiracialism in America, and significant biological health and lifestyle issues, and then future trends for the multiracial population. It's right there. And so, I, I may have to do a show on specifically just that book. So, again, thank you for your time. I went a little long. I enjoyed this. I hope, Hopefully you enjoyed this. Keep it real. Stay safe. Get along with folks who don't look like you. And, and just do the extra effort. We have to get, get along. And uh, just enjoy this new fall semester and fall 2022 season. This is Dr. B. Peace out everybody. We out.